In this 3D pen tutorial, we're going to take a look at a special type of filament, which is called a lot of different things. I'm going to refer to it as see-through filament, but it can also be labeled as translucent or even transparent. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this video is to show what is really achievable from this type of filament when using a 3D pen. The different names can make people get the wrong idea, so I want to show what typical results look like. I also want to demo some new techniques for using see-through filament with a 3D pen. These work for making awesome gems and stained glass-like creations that have an incredibly smooth and shiny finish on one side. Let's start off by taking a realistic look at what these filaments look like after coming out of a 3D pen. If you just sit down and pen out some see-through filament on wax paper, this is what you get. On the plus side, you can indeed see through it. But if you're expecting a beautifully transparent piece of blue plastic, you're going to be disappointed. The standard 3D pen heavy layer lines are visible and make it barely translucent. Let's try some other methods to smooth the surface, which don't involve sanding. The main technique I'm going to show in this video involves penning see-through filaments on mirrors. Mirrors are incredibly flat and they provide a very interesting surface to pen upon. I was really impressed at how smooth and shiny the surface that was against the mirror came out. I've penned on a mirror before and gotten a smooth surface with opaque filaments, but the see-through nature of this filament allows for some crazy reflections and creates a great effect. The only downside is that the opposite side still has a very rough surface and the heavy layer lines are visible. What did I try next? Well, in sticking to my no sanding criteria and following the results of my previous 3D pen smoothing video, I decided to try smoothing the rough side with my wood burning tool. If you don't see much happening, that's because the effects are very subtle. The rough side is getting smoothed down, but because the filament is see-through, you can still view the layer lines that go all the way down through the part. What this means is that the only way to completely get rid of the layer lines is to remelt the whole part and let the layer lines fully blend together. When you compare all three side by side, my vote is that the mirror only part looks the best. Wood burning can't get rid of the layer lines and it has the negative effect of messing up the smooth side that was against the mirror. And when you start comparing the visibility through these various methods, I don't see a huge difference between them. They also look very similar when you put a light behind them. As with other 3D pen filaments, there are a few ways to get them. One way is to buy them as they are sold for 3D printers on big one kilogram spools like this. If you have a big project and want to get a ton of use out of a certain filament, this is the way to go. Another way that I like to buy filament for 3D penning is to buy sample packs. These are a great way to get a wide variety of colors that you can use for small details in your models. But keep in mind that you don't get a lot of each color or type, so there's not a lot of room for experimentation. This filament sample pack has 10 see-through filaments inside it, so it's a great way to get a good variety. When you go searching, the names I see range from clear and transparent, which are completely misleading, to translucent and see-through, which I think are more accurate names. Whatever the names are, the results will be similar to what you see in this video. The only exception to this is if the filament has some special capability like polysmooth filament, which requires extra post-processing and costs a lot more. I wanted to give a few quick tips about penning on mirrors. Since they are so smooth, it can take some practice to get the filament to stick well. When you're laying down the first few lines, I had to slow my hand speed down more than usual to ensure that it sticks. In general, the filament can pull off the mirror very easily, so you have to be extra careful not to tug on it or pull it off. If it does get pulled off, the surface finish won't be quite as nice. Here I added some blue painter's tape to keep the model attached to the glass. Let's now take a look at how to make one of these large, shiny, standalone gems using see-through filament. One of the secrets to making these is to use these paper templates to build off of. I ended up making this out of thicker cardstock so it holds together better. Then I laid out the individual pieces on a mirror using a marker. Getting all this video with mirrors was pretty tricky. Give me some love. After the parts were penned out, I trimmed up the corners. And then I got ready to assemble. So shiny. To get the assembly started, I used some tack adhesive putty to stick the individual pieces to the paper gem. 
Then I added some blue painter's tape in the middle to cinch the edges together, and then very lightly use my wood burning tool to fuse the edges together. Then simply keep repeating this process for the large sections of the gem until you have all but one facet finished like you see here. And repeat the process for the upper part of the gem. The key is to leave one facet opened so you can cut out and remove the paper template from inside. Finally, I hit each seam very lightly with my torch to blend them in. And here's our finished large gem. I thought it was a nice combination of the shiny side from the mirror blended with the sparkle and reflections from the rougher side. This is just one example of some of the templates that exist. I'd love to see what other ones people can make. I wanted to show you a few failures so you get an idea of some techniques that don't work so well and so you realize that for all the good ideas I show, there's a bunch of bad ones I tried out that don't usually make it into videos. This first failure involves trying to use the mirror technique to make a more three-dimensional object. After making the shape out of foil and painter's tape, I laid down the base on the mirror, same as before. I'm trying to use the smooth side from the mirror and make it into a 3D object. I soften it with my torch and then try to form it around the foil and painter's tape. That didn't work so well, so then I tried to soften it more and then basically just ended up melting it. You can see the shiny surface definitely did not survive. This next failure was a time consuming one for me. I got pretty far along making a new 3D pen creation only to realize this technique would not work. So that's after a ton of filing and smoothing and dremeling and more smoothing. And did I mention filing? The idea was that I would have large facets which I would light from the inside. But after I had finished all this work and I split it open to put the LEDs inside, I began to realize that this was not going to look very good. This is what it looks like when you light it from behind. All the layer lines are visible and none of the facets that I work so hard on can be seen. Keep in mind that you can play tricks with your camera and the video to make it look better than it seems. Here the exposures crank way up so that it looks decent. Ah well, live and learn. Let's now talk about a surprising success, this stained glass like creation. It again starts with a template printed on cardstock where I start at the outside and start selectively removing segments. Then I tape the template to the mirror and start transferring the outside of the pattern to it using a marker. Then I trace over the segments I removed earlier. After that, I use some clear tape to reattach the pieces that I had cut out. And then I remove new pieces of the template. I bet you know what's next. Yep, that's right, back to the mirror. This whole process continues until the pattern is transferred over. Then I start laying out the black border on the outside of the model. As I mentioned earlier in the video, be very careful here as the filament pulls off very easily. Then I fill in the blue which surrounds the heart on the outside. Working from the outside in like this helps ensure that the model is anchored down and it's less likely to pull off. Then I trace out the inside black border, taking a lot of care. And now I can start to fill in the heart and we really see the creation starting to take shape. Remember what I said about it being tricky to get video? Here you can almost see my camera pointed straight down. And this is a fun view of what the setup looks like from afar. Almost done. And now for the final bit of blue in the center. Ugh, gave me shivers. It's a little hard to see, but I wanted to try to show the rough side versus the incredibly smooth side. Amazing. Here's another view where you see the light reflecting from the incredibly smooth side, but when I flip it over, the rough side doesn't have any such reflection. And here's the beautiful result when you shine a light through it. And that's what I have to tell you about see-through filaments. I thought the mirror technique really worked well with this filament that the stained glass model came out awesome. Did this video give you some good information and ideas? I'd love to hear from you, so drop me a comment and let me know what you think. If you're interested in learning more about how to use a 3D pen, check out this tutorials playlist, which covers all skill levels.
Finally, don't forget to subscribe if you want more 3D Pen content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.